G'day guys, Matt here from Anneli Made Perfect. In this video we're going to do an overview of the new amp press. Firstly we're going to show you how to set it up out of the box, then we're going to show you how to connect it up to the software and how to use the software, and also we're going to show you some scenarios that you might see when using the press with a variety of different case prep. So stay tuned. Inside the box you'll find the following items. First we've got our USB cable, We've got our Allen keys, we've got our cable for the position sensor, we have our RAM, that's the, uh, the large RAM, we've got our small RAM which comes installed with the press, and uh, we've got our base which has the load cell attached to it, and we've got our main RAM itself. So firstly we can discard the USB cable, we can discard the RAM, the sensor cable there, and what we want to do first is attach the main support structure and RAM itself to the base. So attaching these now, what we want to do is have the base so it's facing you, have the column and the RAM so it's facing you, and you want to basically slot it in. And it may take a little bit of tweaking. There you go. And that'll just sit in there quite nicely. Looking at the front of the press, we've got these six holes. We want to then take those six bolts and put one in each hole, as so. Just have that lightly nipped and then do the same for the other side. You'll have to move the column left and right in order to get that bolt hole to line up. Once that's in, uh, you want to tighten these up fairly tight. So we'll get all six of them in here. Okay, so giving that a decent crank with the Allen key there on each bolt. We don't want these to come loose. Now that we've tightened up the remaining bolts, we can now install the sensor cable. That's pretty simple. What we do is we come around the back and we install the first plug so that the ribbon is pointing towards the back of the support arm here. You'll see a little, there's a little ridge in the plug itself which lines up with a slot in the blue plug. So that's what we want to do there. Okay. And then coming around to the front, we then take the plug and plug it in like so, so that the red part of the cable is pointing to the top and the cable is pointing to the right as you're looking at it from the front. Coming around the back again, we want to take the load cell plug and just plug it in. Now, the vast majority of users uh, will use the longer of the RAM that comes supplied with the press. The short RAM here is for Magnum cartridges or Magnum dies. So what you want to do is just unscrew this. It's quite a long thread. So most of your 308s, your Creedmoors, most dies will take the long RAM. And it's going to be a pretty tall die to require the short one. So just go ahead and install that, and you just want to screw it in roughly halfway for now. That'll be pretty close for the majority of dies out there. So about there, you can lock the lock nut in place. And there we are. So that concludes the assembly of the press. So now let's go and have a look at the software. Now that we've fully assembled the press and we've got our AMP Press app installed on our computer here, we're ready to go ahead and connect the two together and uh, we can start doing a bit of setup and some bullet seating. 
So first of all we want to take our power cable, plug that into the circuit board and then we take our USB cable and we plug that into the circuit board as well. And at the rear of the PCB here you'll see a little button here, you click that, blue light comes on, press powers up. At the same time make sure you've got your USB cable connected into your laptop or computer. So first of all what we want to do is open the AMP Press app on the computer. Now what will happen is the press will be automatically detected and so in this case it'll ask you do you want to connect and of course we want to click OK. It'll then ask you to zero the weight on the load cell. So for this you want to have it clear and then you want to click OK. And what that does is that zeroes the weight on the load cell. So we're just waiting for that to zero. Okay, that's zeroed. Now what we want to do is we want to take our die and we want to take a case that we want to have a bullet seated into it with the bullet. Now we want to adjust the height of the RAM for this die and bullet combination. So we take the two, you can see that it, that could be seated right now, and we want to adjust this RAM so that it is just above the top of this die. So you can see that's not going to fit under there. We want to raise that up a bit, put the die underneath, and then we want to wind that RAM down until we're not quite touching, maybe about a you know, two or so millimeters from the top. And then we want to lock this brass ring, and that set the RAM height. We then want to take this out and click OK. Now, what you're probably wanting to do at this point is set up your die. Your die may already be set for the correct bullet seating depth you are wanting, but if not, we have a function in here that allows you to use the press to press the die. You can measure the bullet seating depth, adjust your die accordingly. So in order to do that, we're going to take this uh, bullet that we want to seat here, we're going to put it under here, and let's just say we wanted to adjust the height of the die. We want to come over here and click Die Setup. That will press the bullet in. It won't take a trace. You can then take out that, that round. You can measure it, and then you can adjust your die accordingly. Once you've done that, you want to then lock your die in place, put it back on the press with it empty, so fully empty. Now you want to put it back underneath the RAM, and you want to click Find X0. What this is going to do is determine the distance that the chart is going to work with. So we want to go find X0. That's now given us the uh, distance parameters to now work with. So now what we can do is we can take a case, we can take a bullet, and at this point in time we're ready to start seating. But before we do that, we want to actually start saving data. So up the top here you've got sessions. You click on that and now you can start creating uh, data. So what we want to do here is this is 308. We want to create a folder called 308. So we want to click on new cartridge. I want to call this 308. Okay. And for this particular seating session I'm just going to call this uh, first, for example, or test, I'll call it test. So there we go. This particular session from now on is called test. Now what this does is by calling your cartridge 308, any subsequent sessions you do with this particular 308 or this particular rifle, you can then add all subsequent sessions under that folder and then compare them. So what I'll do here is I've got my bullet ready to seat. I will now press go, and now we've got our first plot. You can see it's called trace number one, and it's got a few numbers there which we'll get to shortly. So we'll take this one out, and uh, I'll get another one here. Okay, pressing go again. 
Okay, and we've got two totally different plots, and this is because this brass is quite random. We didn't really do much prep work to it, but you can see we've got two traces there. Okay, so let's just say hypothetically we've done 5, 10, 50 of these traces. We've got our, our rounds batched. We can then go and save that. So we go File, and we want to go Save Session, and that's now saved. What we can do now is next time we can go shoot that. We can go, uh, then when we're ready to reload and seat these bullets again, we can go and compare the new session we make to the previous session we've just done. Okay, let's just say we've gone and shot those rounds off and we want to go and do our second session now with the same rifle. So first things we do, we've already connected our press, we're ready to go, we've done Find X0, the, the press is ready to go. First things first, we go Sessions and we go Select Cartridge. 308 will pop up because we uh, created that before and we go OK. Now we have the option to view the previous session, but we don't want to do that just yet, so we're going to go New Session and I'm going to call this test 2. Test 2. Okay. So now what we'll do is we will seat these two. So. so you can see these look quite a bit different. But that's to be expected. It just goes to show how much variation you can get without changing too much. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to save that, but because we've already done a session before in this cartridge or with 308, you've got something here called compare sessions up the top left here. So if I wanted to, there's the two traces I've got, which I've just done, and there's a drop-down menu here that will display all the sessions that you've done ever with that rifle. So in this case, it's got test, the previous one I did, and it's got off selected. If I wanted to, I could turn that on, and it will display in purple the traces I did previously, and then you can quite easily compare the current session to the previous session or any session prior. You've also got a legend at the top here which you can scroll through. You can select by clicking on each trace to see which one it is in the highlighted menu there. So that's a very important feature you can uh, use to compare the progress of your loads. Another interesting feature we have here is sort. So up the top right hand uh, menu here we've got sort by trace number is default. What that'll do is it'll order in the legend on the right hand side by the number of which trace it is, so trace 1, 2, 3, etc. What you can do is you can arrange the plots here by either peak force or work done. So for example if I arrange by peak force it'll automatically change the legend here to display the one with the highest peak force first and then the one with the second highest peak force second and so on and what that allows you to do is batch your ammo in accordance with that. So you can also see if there's a flyer, you can put that to one side quite easily. You can also batch by total work done. What that is, is that's if you think area under the chart. So one trace, for example, might have a very high peak, but overall quite a low workload to put the bullet into that case. So you can sort by either of those two options. Now to cover some important menu items. So if we look at setup, you've got units and that allows you to change the scale into either metric or imperial. So pounds, kgs, over inches or millimetres. If we look at manual, this allows you to move the ram forward or backwards by small increments or you can always make it go back to the top all the way up, no matter if it's how far down it is essentially. With the view, you've got clear last plot, that will delete the previous plot, the one that you just made, or trace. Clear all plots will remove all the traces from the, from the chart area. You've got plot cursor, this is kind of a useful tool, it basically turns your mouse into a uh, sort of a crosshair looking thing, a coordinate measuring tool essentially. You can use this if there's a very interesting part of a trace that you're wanting to really hone in on, you can use this to see exactly the weight and distance 
um, a lot easier than just reading it off the scale. So you can turn that, that basically enables or disables it. You've got set dark mode, so if you're not a fan of having the white background, you can set it to a dark mode, and that if you're in a dark nighttime environment, don't want to hurt your eyes, that's probably quite useful. It'll also change the, uh, the colors of the trace from blue, which is default to yellow, so uh, that's quite nice. Uh, you've also got the ability to make the app either windowed viewed or full screen. Uh, that could be quite useful for those who are on tablets or, or so on. Coming across to the sessions uh, selection here, we've got set session folder location. That allows you to set the default location of where the, uh, all the traces and files are saved. Uh, you, below that you've got select cartridge. That allows you to go in and select what cartridge you're working with. You can create a new cartridge below that. And then you can either delete an individual session or a whole cartridge group. So deleting a cartridge will delete not only the cartridge profile, but any saved traces within it. So be careful when you do that. It will prompt you and warn you otherwise. Looking at the user interface, if, first of all, we've got compare session records. Uh, anytime you're going back into a cartridge you've uh, made traces for previously, all prior traces will be stored in there. You can select to view and review, um, compare or not with that drop down menu. To the right of that we've got the go button. That tells the RAM to basically do a cycle and record a plot. To the right of that we've got find x0. That determines the x-axis area that we're working with, the distance from the top of the RAM to the bottomed out die. Below that we've got die setup. That allows you to activate the RAM without uh, making any traces or recording any data. It simply allows you to work the RAM um, in order for you to set up your die. To the right of that we've got armed. That's just a checkbox indicating that the press and software are ready to record data. Above that you've got auto run. So auto run is basically uh, a, a feature which means you don't have to click on the go button each time you want to make a trace. There is a setup for this. Uh, that'll be uh, talked about in the user manual when uh, that comes with the machine but essentially it'll detect the weight of the die and cartridge combination and after a small time frame it'll work the press automatically for you and create a trace, a trace automatically for you. So that's just simply, uh, that's simply just a checkbox either on or off. Uh, to the right of that you've got auto scale. Now a cool feature is we've got click and drag with the um, plot area so clicking anywhere and holding it in that trace window will allow you to move it around you can use the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in and out and if ever you get lost or if you zoom way in and can't figure out how to get back just clicking auto scale will pull everything back to where it started off as original. Uh, to the right of that you've got the sort menu that allows you to sort by either the order in which the trace was created or by peak force or the, most, the, the trace with the most amount of force required to seat the bullet. Uh, down to the least. What we're trying to achieve obviously with everything hand loading is consistency and when using this press for the first time it can be quite alarming to see a lot of variation and that's normal. So what we've done is we've provided this tool along with every press. It's essentially a simulation of a die, it's a sprung loaded plunger and it's to give you reassurance that the press itself is accurate and repeatable. To set up for this die, what you want to do is firstly put it under the ram just like you normally would with a die ready to seat a bullet with the spring installed. You want to loosen the ram, bring it down to just above the plunger just like you normally would. You then take it out, remove the spring, put the plunger back in. That now simulates a bottomed out die. Now we can just go find X0. That's now set that x-axis. We can now reinstall the spring and we can go and use this and see how precise it is. So clicking go generates a nice and straight plot and by doing that again multiple times you can see just how repeatable the press is. Now if you can get that with your ammo we want to know. 
What we're going to do now <coughs> is quickly show you some scenarios that you might encounter when using the press and the differences you might see. So first of all, we've got a selection of cases here and we're going to do three of each uh, with the exception of these two at the end. So the first three that we're going to see, these are all 308, these first three are a two thou interference fit or neck tension and they're dirty. So what we're going to do is take the first one, we're all ready to go and we just go and seat that one. <clears throat> so we've got a rather interesting plot there. Take that out. Seat the next one. So yeah, a lot of variation already. These don't have powder in them, they're just dummy rounds. <clears throat> okay, so we've got three traces there, which show quite a bit of variation. Okay, so the next three are going to be brushed. There is no difference with the exception that they're brushed. There's still a tooth owl neck tension. Quite a lot different to the previous three. And so far, way more consistent. Okay, so what I'm going to quickly do now is highlight those last three, which you can clearly see are the bottom three there, almost identical in comparison to the unbrushed or dirty cases that we did prior. Just by the way, the brushing that I'm referring to is a nylon brush. Uh, we have it in a lathe, or you can just have it in a handle, and two strokes is enough to stay a straight nylon brush. Okay, the next three cases is brushed again but with only one thou neck tension. So less force required to seat these ones so far. Again, we're seeing that same level of consistency, but we're seeing a lower force required due to the interference fit being a lot less. Again, highlighting those last three in green there, very consistent when compared to the first three that we did above it. Okay, so this next case here, this is again a, uh, it, it's a one thou interference fit, uh, but it's a compressed load. So we've got powder in here. We're expecting to see a rather interesting plot with this, with this case. Okay, so what we saw there is very indicative of a compressed load. You can see we started off with a very consistent trace compared to the previous three, which I'll highlight there. However, because we started to crush the powder or to contact the powder with the base of the bullet and compress it, we start to see that load increasing, increasing, increasing all the way to the die bottoming out. So this is not a standard, uh, uh, not a standard compression load, however, it's just to highlight a point. The final round that we're going to do here is a one thou brushed uh, fit, but we're going to have a longer bullet. So this is a longer bullet than the ones we were setting before, just to show the capabilities of the x-axis. So what you can see there, a longer bullet, 
and you can see it started out quite a lot further out than the rest of them. What you can also see is the inconsistencies with the starting heights of these cases as you move forward along here. So these cases were not prepped um, as you normally would with competition loads, hence this variation. However, you can clearly see with the long uh, bullet there that there is definitely a measurable distance with the starting point of that bullet because obviously it started further out or had the plunger starting further out. So it's very important that you reset your die based on this factor before you uh, go and do a new session with new bullets. Just to point out, the position sensor on the amp press is accurate to a thousandth of an inch. It'll very easily highlight discrepancies with trimming to length. This has been a brief overview on how to set up the amp press, how to use the software, and what variations you might get when first using it. Just to point out, this tool is primarily used as a comparator. It allows you to see the differences certain procedures make. The differences you'll see when using this press, for example, can be amazing. From just brushing the necks, for example, to turning the necks, chamfering, reaming the necks, what bullets you use, what neck lubes you use. All of these factors will be visible when using this tool. This tool by itself won't give you better ammo. It's designed to make you make the right decisions when making better ammo. One of the procedures we recommend you do is to always number each round you make. For example, we've got a tray here which is numbered 1 to 20. What you do is start off with all of your rounds in this order. You can use the press to see what order they were in by either workload or peak force. You can then take those bullets and batch them accordingly. So for example, if you had two trays, you could have one that is 1 to 20, and all of them are numbered 1 to 20. If it tells you that trace number 5, for example, or bullet number 5 out of this tray was the highest possible peak force, you would put that bullet into position number 1, and so on. So it can be very useful for batching. In closing, this tool has been incredibly enlightening for our own research to use. We've discovered various things that we didn't think worked, but do, and things that we did think worked, which don't. We think you're going to have a lot of fun using this press, as we have. We hope you enjoy using it.